the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500 is over. As I'm filming this, it's June and the month of May has since passed. But regardless, let's recap this amazing 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. Qualifying for the Indy 500 this year was held on May 21 and 22. For the 106th running of the Indy 500, we would see exactly 33 entrants for this race. So, therefore, there is no bumping in qualifying. No fear of not making it to the Indy 500. It was all about going as fast as you can to determine your starting position in the race. Qualifying for the Indy 500 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway spans two days. With the qualifying format on day one, it is to determine the positions from 13th to 33rd. And if you finish in the top 12, you'll move on to day two to determine those final 12 spots at the prize pole position award. In past years, they would take the top nine from day one to vie for pole on day two, but this year they changed it up with it being the top 12. The cars that really showed they had the speed at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is the Chip Ganassi Racing Team. Scott Dixon would win pole position with a four lap average of 234.046 miles per hour. Scott Dixon breaks the record for the best four lap average speed in qualifying for pole position. The rest of the front row sees Scott Dixon's teammate Alex Pelot start second and Renus VK of Ed Carpenter Racing starting third. Then on race day May 29, 2022, after all the pageantry of the opening of the Indy 500, the race happened. It was a very clean start to the race. The majority of the Indy 500 this year saw clean racing. The cautions that would come out were for single car incidences. Most of those crashes causing yellows would happen in turn two. Renus VK, who started on a front row, saw him crash out in turn two. Roman Grosjean would fall victim to crashing out in turn two as well. And Scott McGoffin's crash happened in turn three. I think for this race, the front row was cursed. Again, Renus VK crashed out in turn two. Alex Blow would enter a closed pit lane forcing him to go back for emergency services to get filled up and then going back to the pits to get his full pit stop done. And then lastly, Scott Dixon. In the final pit stops of the race, the drivers see themselves going to pit under a green flag situation. As Scott Dixon entered pit road, he would get caught going too fast. His penalty would be a drive-through penalty. After leading the majority of this race, his chances of winning the Indy 500 again would end there. With Chip Ganassi Racing, they have five cars in the running for this year's Indy 500. With two of them being out, it was all left to Marcus Erickson, Tony Kanaan, and Jimmy Johnson. Despite Scott Dixon and Alex Blow being out, Tony Kanaan and Marcus Erickson were still in contention from Chip Ganassi Racing to win this year's Indy 500. Another team that was doing well in this year's race was McLaren. With their drivers Felix Rosenquist and Pato Award, they were contending up in the front, leading the race at certain moments. Connor Daly of Ed Carpenter Racing had his time to shine as he took the lead over Scott Dixon on lap 81. The cars and drivers of Team Penske did struggle this race. Like I mentioned, Scott McLaughlin did crash out. Now, in the final stint of the race, after Scott Dixon's penalty, the race saw McLaren's Felix Rosenquist and Pato Award, along with Chip Ganassi Racing's Tony Kanaan and Marcus Erickson battle for the win of the 100. 6 Indianapolis 500. Marcus Erickson would manage to pass for the lead and manage to get that field as Pato Award and the other drivers behind him would get caught in lap traffic. But with six laps left in the race, turn two claimed another victim and that's Jimmy Johnson. And to see him crash out with just six laps left in the race, I felt bad for Jimmy Johnson. This accident would bring out a red flag so that the track can get cleaned up and we could see this race finish under a green flag. We would see this race restart with three laps to go, which would lead into a two lap shootout. In that two lap shootout, it would be Pato Award, 
versus Marcus Erickson. Erickson would aggressively weave into straightaways. In my opinion, he has the right to do that. He's not actively blocking in reaction to. He is making that first move. But with Erickson's aggressive weaving, Pato Award would still be close to Marcus Erickson, staying in his draft. Going into the final lap, Pato Award would make an attempt to pass on the outside of turn one, but Marcus Erickson would hold station and Pato Award would have to concede the spot, relegating himself to second. Then turn two claims another victim again with Sage Karam bringing out the caution flag, therefore ending the race as it was on the final lap. Marcus Erickson wins the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. Pato Woolward would finish in second and Tony Kanaan would finish in third. The 106th running of the Indianapolis 500 provided once again another exciting race. Since the Indy 500 offers double points for the championship, it really shook up the championship standings after the race finished. Marcus Harrison moves all the way to the top with 226 points. Pato Award is in second with 213 points. Alex Pillow is in third with 212 points. Joseph Newgarden really struggled in the Indy 500 this year and has moved to fifth in the championship standings. And with Scott Dixon, he is currently in sixth. There is no rest for the IndyCar series as they race this weekend for the Detroit Grand Prix, race 7 of the season, at the Bell Isle Street Circuit. This is possibly the final year the IndyCar series races on the Bell Isle Street Circuit. As next year, it is scheduled that the Detroit Grand Prix is held in the streets of downtown Detroit. This weekend for the Detroit Grand Prix, you can watch all the sessions live on Peacock. The race on Sunday will air on the USA Network as well as Peacock. Thank you for watching this recap of the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. Please check out more of my variety of videos on the Spellgo YouTube channel and as always, thank you for watching.